The way I farm today is absolutely, totally different than the way my grandfather farmed 50 years ago. It's totally different the way than my father did 25 years ago when I joined the family business. It's totally different because of the tech revolution from how we farmed 10 years ago. 10 years ago, we used broad scale, one size fits all strategies to grow our crops, corn and soybeans. Now we farm by the foot. We farm with a prescription for fertilizer. We use seeds that are best suited for our area and planted in a population based on a satellite delivered computer prescription. We harvest at the exact right moment to reduce drying costs and to fit the market for when it wants it. Everything has changed. I think if we're starting to think about the 10 and the 30 year time horizon, what I can imagine is an environment where we understand that tech, that food tech is a long game rather than a short game. So I think for me, what I'm really excited about is protein products that are healthier and more nutritious than what we see today. So things like high fiber burgers or high fiber steaks um, or different kinds of meat products that have nutraceutical capabilities and highly bioavailable nutrients for people. So things like nutrients from fruits and vegetables that you can find in beef burgers or chicken or steak or or hybrid products like shiitake pork. I think that's entirely reasonable in the time scales we're talking about. We work very closely with our farmers to help them have access to the information, to the to technology, the farming technology, um, to information gathered from all of, across our farmers so that they can uh, make the best decisions to increase their yields, increase the price that they charge for their coffee. The result of a lot of this change will be more variety. Um, I, I think both from a consumer perception perspective as well as an enabling technology one, having as many SKUs as possible be, has been kind of the trend in the retail space. And technology is 100% necessary to enable that. Um, you can't get a variety of mango from um, India to the US unless something changes in the supply chain, but I think it will. I see a lot of great potential um, for automation and machine learning to impact big data, basically to impact all parts of our lives. And I think there's no doubt that will apply to agriculture as well. So I say 10 years from now, you'll see a lot more modeling, um, more accurate, forecasting and crop yield predictions that will help to improve the current physical tools, the seeds and the crop protection chemicals that are already on the market. It will make them better through data science. We see all this great progress in personalized medicine. How can we apply these technologies in agriculture? So it's really the driver and this is the moment. So in five years, if everybody wants it, the regulators, the, pe the people, I feel we have the technology to do that, but we should all work together to make it happen because that will totally transform, I think, the world. And hopefully I'm still in charge of something and not retired yet to see that happen. <laughs>
um, radical change may be necessary for innovation really to take off. I think from a technology standpoint, there are so many things happening at a high pace that I actually not worried that we, in five years, I think it could be totally different. If it will be different, I think that's the question because I think we are advancing very fast from a technology standpoint, but we are losing people at the same time behind us. So, so the disconnect that we experience all of us, I think in the dialogue with the consumers, I think is due to the pace of advancing technology. So, so maybe we have to pause for some time and say, well, we know we can do all these great things, but if people don't want it or don't understand it, then we are not going to be able to, to do it. So I think we try to be innovative, but sometimes we have to remember that we serve all those different types of customers. So we can't be too innovative because we may isolate a large number of our customers um, or even the partners who work with our, we call our employees partners. Um, so we really have to be innovative and we, we try to be on the forefront of things, but I think our skill makes that a little difficult and the fact that we serve so many types of people makes it difficult. I wish I could tell you that farmers understood how forefront this issue is, where your food comes from, how it was produced, what impact it has on our environment and ecosystems, what sort of uh, carbon footprint it has, how sustainable it is, how clean and nutritious it is. I think most farmers are just wired to do their best job they can of taking care of their land or their livestock and uh, being efficient about growing food, healthy, safe food. They just had no idea that that this is what the public wants.